I thought, what do, what do I do next? Do I go back to work? Do I even think about work? Do I, do I just lay here? What do I do? I had never been through anything before. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, got a call from my agent and I, I told her, she actually came out right after it happened. She's a very, very dear friend to me too and said, I, said, I don't think I'm ever working again. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't imagine, imagine going back to work at this point. She said, I understand, but I got this call out of the blue. A friend of mine, um, he works for the Pacers. He has this, this job that I think would be perfect for you. And I said, no, right away. I said, I can't, I can't even imagine doing that. It's just not something that I can even put my, wrap my brain around at this point. She said, well, just think about it. I understand you're in a place, but I, I think it might be good for you to focus on something else and maybe start the next stage of your life. And I really had really blocked out the rest of the world. Um, I, I, I said one moment when I woke up one day, something has to change here. Andy would be looking at me saying, this is not the girl I knew. This is not the woman I married. I want to see her up. I want to see you out there, and I want to see you changing the world like I had made my life's goal was to change the world, which he did. So I said, what am I going to do? Okay. I prayed about it. I talked to Andy's family. I talked to my priest, talked to my family, and something just in my heart said, take it, go. You need to start moving on. Andy wants you to. So I did, and I came to Andy, and the people, the people here have been absolutely unbelievable. When I first started working, my boss, everyone around me, they really did save me. I mean, it was like a whole new family here, like when I when I first arrived, the construction worker at the harness factory lost. And I just met one of my someone that lives in the same building as I. There you are. He helped me. With, he helped me move in. I walked in. He said, "Oh, you're moving in. I'll help you." Literally, was my my personal mover. Helped me. I've never seen anything like it. I'm like, oh, this construction worker is my new best friend, and we're still friends to this day, by the way. Helped me moved all my things up. He was unbelievable. Jim Morris, Jamie Burns, all the people that I work for, Kristenary, they were just such a shoulder for me to lean on and such a support. I will be so thankful. They always called me, checked on me, sent me emails to make sure I was okay. So I thought, okay, we're moving forward. We're going to get through this. About halfway through my first season, which was two years ago, I had a breakdown. I had been pushing those feelings of sadness to the back of my head. Every time I thought it, I said, no, don't go there. Don't go there. Because when I did, I was on the floor, inconsolable. It was one of those things where I couldn't find a way to have a, a medium there. I couldn't think about it and deal with it. It was either don't think about it and just just don't just don't think about it at all, or I did and I was not I wasn't able to function. I, I knew something had to give. I wasn't sure what. I hadn't been dealing with the loss of Andy. I really hadn't dealt with it the way that I should have. So what I did start to do is I started to go to counseling, which for some reason I had told myself I didn't need it, I didn't want it, I'm going to just do this on my own, which if I could say one thing, if you can get help from other people, please please accept it because that was the one thing that, that really helped me. I went to talk to Kay, she's my, my gal, she's actually just down the street, went to her every other day and she helped me so much and she's Catholic, we t it was definitely something I wanted to be faith-based. So we had talks every other day. We went through a in very intense grief counseling session that was difficult but necessary. And finally, I felt, okay, I can get through this. I'm on the other side. And that took really about, uh, about a year. And I still see her. I was actually going to come to see her before, but I didn't. I just came straight here. But she's wonderful. And she helped me so, so much. And what I was so grateful for her was that she... She helped me, but she helped me to help myself. So when I come to these crossroads where I don't want to think about it, I, I don't want it to have happened, I can deal with it and now think of positive ways to help others. And that's why things like this are so important. And then this, this one moment that I will forever remember that is so special in my heart. I got through the counseling. I still had not been going to church. I just wasn't ready. I didn't know if I could handle walking in there on my own without Andy by my side. I didn't know if I had the capacity to do that yet. And it was the young adults mass on a Sunday night. I decided I'm just going to walk down. I'm just going to do it. Walked in and it was much more difficult than I had thought it would be. I walked in by myself. I sat down in the pew. I put my head, I remember it like it was yesterday. I put my head down. I just started crying. I started bawling. I, I looked over and I saw some couples over here, couples over there, and my, my guy wasn't next to me. And it was harder than I had thought it would be. And I tried to hold it in. I didn't want anyone to see me. I tried, I tried to be okay. Got through Mass, uh, just waited a little while after so I could get myself together. And this, gosh, she couldn't have been over 16, 15 or 16-year-old, 
comes up to me, sits down, takes my hand, and she's like, well, are you okay? What, what's, what's wrong, are you okay? And I, don't, I didn't know her name, I didn't know anything about her. I just started crying and told her everything. This poor girl, this 15-year-old girl, <laughs> and told her everything. She's like, I wish I would've just kept walking. <laughs> but <laughs> I just told her everything, and she was the, it was God sent her to me that day. After all, everything I said, she looked at me and she said, just keep coming, just keep coming to church. Don't give up on us, don't give up on him, don't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Just keep coming. And then she got up and left. She was like my little angel. And ever since then, I, I have been going. And it's been the best thing for me. I keep going. I keep going. It got easier and easier and easier. And now it is back to that positive, the more than positive thing. And I look forward to it every week. I was just, I will forever be grateful, be grateful to her. So, like I said, didn't stop coming. And I didn't give up began reading those books that I had put in storage that Andy and I read together. I pulled them out, started reading them again, called those people that had helped me that I, I hadn't talked to in a while because talking to them sometimes brought back feelings I didn't want, called them all, thanked them for all the help that they had given me. I started to go to confession again, which was something else I had stopped doing and that was huge for me too. That was big. The, the counseling continued, still goes on. I probably will go on forever, and it is something that I've been very grateful for. It's been huge in my life. I spent the summer with Andy's family, which was a really, really important thing for me. And we went, we talked, we just sat out on the deck, really, really got back to the feeling that I could be around them without him, because that was hard for me for a while too, because he was the glue that kept that family together. And when I was with them, with them without him, it, it just reminded me of the absence of, the, of him and it was hard but I, I really wanted to get back to the relationship with them that I had so I spent the summer with them. I really stopped being angry. That anger I mentioned before that overwhelmed me, that was gone. I was, I was actually to the point where I was, was, was grateful. I was thankful. I was thankful for everything that, not that it happened, but everything that I had gone through and the things that I had learned and I started thinking, he, Andy made you the person that you are. You lost it there for a while when you lost him but he wants you to get back to that. He brought you back to that faith that you had always wanted so much and you should be thankful for. And I, I, find, I really finally was. So this year, really, I, it's been a huge turning point for me, a huge, huge milestone, I, I guess I, I could say. I mean, I'll never be fully healed from, from what happened and, and losing him. And I don't, I mean, if you've lost someone, you, you know, you never really will be. But I felt like myself again, which was which was big, and I'm working on it every single day. It's it's a process. It will continue to be difficult, but my friendships are better this year. My work is better. Everything is better because I've come to the place where I can be thankful for everything that Andy taught me, and that anger is now dissipated. I, and now that I look back, the, I guess the lesson I, that I was supposed to meet Andy, and Andy was supposed to to meet me. Um, it was not just it was not just a chance meeting. Uh, if whatever all the doctors had said and everyone had told me that he, he was, it was something that was going to happen. It was just something in him, a, a defect that was going to happen. So I'm, I'm just now blessed and thankful that I, I was the chosen one that got to spend those three years with him before he passed away. And I, I guess I was married for just 10 days, but that journey is something that I, I feel blessed to have been a part of. I got to meet really the man who changed my life and the one thing that I can say is that I was supposed to meet Andy because he had thought he would one day would be a husband and a father. And when he passed away, he still had those hopes. So I'm, I guess my, my lesson to you, or what I would say, is that be grateful for everything that happens. And when you are put in a difficult position, lean on your family, lean on your friends, and don't ever give up on the Lord and don't ever give up on your faith. Even if you think it's it's gone, I can't get it back, I'm so angry, I can't. When you come back to the Lord, he's waiting for you. He's always waiting for you. He'll give you some time, he knows you're mad, but he has a plan and when you come back to him, it's like be, being reunited with your lost love and that's how I have felt. So I would, don't wish upon anyone what happened to me and what happened to Andy's family, but don't give up on yourself and definitely don't give up on the Lord. Keep going to church like that gal said, who I'll forever be grateful for. Keep going to church, keep your faith and keep loving God. And thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it so much.